call you live on the air. Please tell us your name, where you're calling from. Okay, my name is Matthew, and I'm from uh, Merlesville, South Carolina. And I was talking with a guy the other day um, about, uh, he, he was mentioning Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse 15. And, uh, and I got to where I was basically saying, okay, Yeshua, he was born by a uh, virgin birth, which was a lot of paganism. You can find mythos and all that kind of stuff with that. Uh, but, uh, we got into where I was proving that, okay, this is a literal seed. And then I was mentioning numbers, you know, by the, by the father's seed, by the father's tribe and, and got into all that. So I proved all that. And then he got into, and then he asked me, okay, so he said, well, if the seed is literal, as you're saying, then what about the serpent in which he, um, uh, in which the, uh, it's it, the head, the head is crushed. And, uh, and he said, well, is that literal? And so that's a question for Rabbi Topia Singer. And I love your guys' show, by the way. I, I have followed him for many, many years. He's, uh, He's definitely helped me in a lot of, I mean, like, I can't even thank him as much as, like, this is, like, one of my favorite people. I love Tobia Singer. I really, really do. He's a, he's an amazing, amazing rabbi. Absolutely agreed. And, you know, you bring up a good point. So for, for yourself and for others who, who are watching, uh, you know, you can simply go to Rabbi Singer's YouTube channel or even to Knock Talk and type in uh, type in Tobia Singer and then a topic next to it, and you're more than likely going to get some hits on it to take you directly to those topics. So that's a really good tool to have. So what was, your, cool. what was your name again? Matthew. Mo Matthew. Very good. Very good. Thank you for calling in. You can go to hang up now and tune in for your answer, okay? Th- thank you, buddy. Hey, you bet. Bye. All right, Rabbi, take it away. So Christians use Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and the context here is that God is addressing those who were involved in the sin that occurred in the Garden of Eden the woman, and the serpent. The serpent here means either Satan or the evil inclination, something that is a seducer, that seeks to, to seduce mankind away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So What's being conveyed is that the serpent will have the ability to bite the heel of mankind, the descendants of Eve, but the descendants of Eve will be able to crush the head of the serpent. And in fact, in the very next chapter, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we see precisely that. The conversation in Genesis chapter 4 is between God and Cain. And he's saying that sin is hiding behind the door. You are the object of his desire, meaning his job is to cast forth blandishments, but you could master over him. You could destroy him. Okay? Now, this is very critical because in Christian theology, that's completely impossible. Man is a slave of sin. This is conveyed explicitly in the Christian Bible. Now, I want to go right to your question. I want to get into the meat here because it's really, really juicy. Well, Christians claim through a, a monumental blunder, a monumental blunder, that in Genesis 3.15, because the, the term that's used here is your seed, referring to the woman's seed, given that a woman doesn't have seed, as in sperma, the Greek word, but she rather has an ovum, so that must mean a very unique kind of woman. And therefore, it must be, it must be someone who was born a virgin. This is all complete nonsense. I want to just attack that so you could free yourself of this filth. Really, it's filth, because it's, it's, if you're going to Las Vegas, I mean, don't go, <laughs> if you go to a magic show, so you know that the magician, no matter how impressive he is, he's, he's doing tricks. He's, he's, you know that when going in, that he's not really doing magic. And, he, and you know it, that he really is using misdirection, and people applaud and go, hoo-ha, and they say, you're really wonderful. Why are they saying you're really wonderful? Because everyone knows he's not really doing magic. And therefore, his, the sleight of hand, the misdirection, is very attractive because how did he do that? Why do people ask, how did he do that? Because it's not magic. If it's magic, why do you have to ask how he did it? 
because as it turns out in Genesis 3.15, I want you to look at the words here. The evil oshis ben cho uveno isha, and I will create hatred between you and the woman. Uvein zarach uvein zara, and between your seed, the pronoun is the serpent seed, uvein zara, and her seed. And women don't have seeds, everybody knows biology. This is complete chicanery. Meaning, in biblical Hebrew, the word zero in Tanakh doesn't mean the reproductive material that comes from men, the seed, but it means offspring, offspring. How do you know I'm telling you the truth? Because you see it. In fact, if you go just a little further, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 10, an angel is speaking to Hagar. Hagar is being told about the birth of Yishmael. And the angel of Hashem said to her, Who's her? It's Hagar, the mother of Yishmael. I will greatly multiply your seed. Got it? I'm giving you now the clearest evidence in the world to make it very clear to you, Kindlech children, you were born from above, not from below. You have a neshama, you have a soul inside of you. You're creating the image of Hashem. You deserve to drink pure, clean water, not filthy water. You deserve to drink from a, a well that has living water, not from a bro broken cistern that could provide no water. This is all fake, phony. It's all a, a trick. All a trick. So in biblical he be very, very careful in biblical Hebrew, the word zera or zaracha, the only thing it does convey specifically is physical seed. That's all it means. It doesn't mean like disciples or anything like that. It means physical offspring that emerges from you. You could see that clearly in the first five passages as an example of Genesis 15, the, the chapter before. Notice I'm... I'm, I'm I'm looking at passages like right there in context, which cannot be misunderstood, cannot be misapprehended. It's the same exact word. And Christian Bibles are literally, they're using fake decks. You go, you go into, you know, they have these magic stores. You know, they sell magic tricks. And you could buy decks of cards that just have fake decks. Well, well, Cards stick together, they move like this. There's a, there are all kinds of magic tricks you could buy. That's what this is. These are all magic tricks, except magic tricks are nice for entertainment, as long as everybody in the audience knows that this is magic and the person is not really doing witchcraft, which would be forbidden. But here, the danger is that people are destroying themselves spiritually because of these f fake teachings. Moreover, Listen here very carefully because here's the punchline. And you're going, really? There's more? Boy, is there more. Listen carefully. I want you to listen. I want all your brains. Listen like you never listened in your life. Let's say I concede everything. Let's say for a moment that I say, you know what? I'll give it all to you. That this really is talking about the Messiah in Genesis, the, Genesis chapter 3.15. And the role of the Messiah is to destroy the serpent, to step on his head, and therefore to destroy Satan. Let's just say I concede it all. And if you remember the Mel Gibson movie, the Mel Gibson, that great luminary, what will we ever do without him? In his fantastic film, The Passion of Christ, every time I have insomnia, this is the film I watch because the Jews come off so good in that film. I love it. So you see a point there where the snake is stepped on. That imagery is employed very well in Gibson's film. Let's say the job of the Messiah is to destroy Satan, if in fact the role of the Mashiach is to destroy so-called the devil, which means to terminate sin in the world, if that's what his job is, then it proves clearly that Christianity is a false religion. Because that's exactly what Jesus did not accomplish. I mean, let's say I concede it all. I first will show you this is hocus pocus. This is all fake. Because they're using the word seed. 
So in, you know, your biology that a man has seed and a woman has an ovum. So then we go, all right, it must be the same. And we do it sadha shavha. And we could wind up in, in a garbage can, right? It, literally, your head can wind up in the garbage. In the garbage. Why? 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 Because people don't read Tanakh in Hebrew. A little, little language that any little child could understand. It's not written for scholars. The Torah was written for every person. Let's say I could see it all. That means Jesus is not the Mashiach. He failed. Satan, from what I've been told, is doing fantastic. And he's actually, he's quite, he's a big knocker in the Christian Bible. And there's sometimes that Satan influenced Paul and his companions and Satan hindered me. You have that. So he didn't destroy Satan. Just another one of the hundreds of things that Jesus didn't accomplish. And Christianity is only real to the fertile imagination of the Christian mind. That's it. So therefore, conceding it all is nonsense. But you don't, don't concede it all because it's all nonsense. Just look it up. All I want to do is that you don't need me anymore, really. I want to be... I care about you guys, I really do, but my goal is to wean you away from needing someone like me. Go to the original text, look it up for yourself, give Hashem a big, big kiss. We're going to see the coming of a true Mashiach, but be a menu quickly in our time. Thank you for your question. <laughs> יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחף צוקו אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו